It's me, Professor Tree, and today I'm going to show you my top 10 hidden details and features in Scarlet and Violet. Let's go! In my number 10 spot is the fact that the Switch the player has in their bedroom will change colour depending on what Joy-Cons and Switch model you have. So for example, if you had the standard Switch, it would have the red and blue Joy-Cons, but if you had the Splatoon Joy-Cons attached, then they would be blue and orange. But that is not all. If you have the white OLED, then the Joy-Cons and the dock will match your Switch as well, and despite being one of the most unnoticed details I've found out about in the Scarlet and Violet games, I think it's really cool that Game Freak added such a unique little detail to the game to make everyone feel more immersed as if it's their Switch. My ninth place spot is the fact that Gary Oak's silhouette can sometimes appear on the Poker Center's animated banner alongside a Pokeball. This could potentially be a reference to him making a return in future appearances in DLCs and stuff like that, or it could just simply be a nod to him being the former champion of the Kanto region. Either way though, it's nice to see representation from the earlier games of the franchise in the newest installments, as it makes them all feel connected despite being vastly different in terms of graphics graphics quality and gameplay, and honestly it's just great to see. Falling into my 8th place spot is Herba Mystica, being a clever way to disguise the traditional HM system from the previous Pokemon games, because as you guessed it, the Herba Mystica is actually an acronym HM, and I love the fact that they found a way to make a nod to the classic features without completely removing them from existence. A lot of older fans like myself are losing a lot of classic features nowadays, and it really is heartbreaking, but it felt criminal that they wouldn't include any kind of reference, so I'm glad that they did with the HMs. Arriving in my number 7 spot is the fact that we can now rename traded Pokemon once, allowing us to remove annoying names like hyperlinks and names in other languages that you maybe can't understand. This is something I've been wanting for a while from the franchise and I'm so glad that they finally added, as back in Sword and Shield I was one to trade many legendaries named and I quote, Poop. And while on paper that seemed pretty funny to the trainer that sent them, it did unfortunately mean that poor Pokemon was permanently called Poop for the rest of its days. Up in 6th place is when hunting for ingredients to trade to make your certain TMs you need to upgrade your Pokemon. You can actually pin the ingredient list to the side of your screen to save you having to go back into the menu every time you forget which Pokemon you need to defeat. This is a brilliant addition to the franchise and I seriously hope this feature stays going forward as the TM machine made setting up my team exactly how I wanted it so much easier and that alone makes it one of my favourite new changes to the games. Next up, our number 5 feature is Rotom Phone Cases and I know what you must be thinking, Rotom Phone Cases? How is that a feature? Well, let me explain. If you didn't know already, if you have saved data from Pokemon Let's Go Eevee or Pikachu you can talk to a rather inconspicuous woman in the Mesa Goza Plaza, and she will give you four exclusive cases for your Rotom phone. And I like this as a hidden reward, as it rewards players for being a fan of the franchise for a lot longer, and it's nothing overpowered, so it's nice to see that we still get something special for being around longer in the series. Dropping into the fourth place position is the Ace Tournament. Now, for those of you who haven't beaten the game yet, this is a minor spoiler, but after the lovely song Celestial by Ed Sheeran finishes playing and the credits have completed, the player will then be asked by the champion to go around and challenge all the gyms they had previously beaten as a way of sort of testing that they're up to the level the Pokemon League expects of them in the Paldea region. This is great not only for the fact that you can do some grinding ahead of the DLC, but it also allows the player to test out new abilities and new teams to trash the gym leaders that may have previously given them a tough time. And me being the petty person I am, I loved this as I got to go back and whoop Larry's team over and over again. So with that in mind, give the Ace Tournament a try guys, it's definitely worth your time even though it doesn't seem like it. And moving on to third place. In my third place position is the Hidden Gimme Ghouls around the Paldea region. For those of you that want to get yourself a gold Engo, please remember this. Yes, you can get the coins by defeating the chest form Gimme Ghoul that you find in the ruins of Paldea, but if you want to maximize your coin output, here's how you do it. First, by entering the ruins, you need to listen out for a little Mario wah sound, and when you hear it, look around carefully for the Gimme Ghoul and with luck you'll find it. Do remember though, they are rather small looking, so keep that in mind and look closely for them. And if you've made it this far into the video, comment down below, show me the money to show me how many of you made it this far. Moving on to number two. The second to last feature, which I think is honestly kind of cool, maybe some of the newer players as well that haven't messed around with the picnic mechanic yet, you're probably wondering where the daycare is in Paldea, and unfortunately no physical daycare to my knowledge exists in the Paldea region. But don't worry, as the new picnic mechanic serves as a portable daycare, which in my opinion is an improvement, as when you check the basket next to the picnic table, there is a small chance you will find an egg, and with any luck, it will grow into a stronger, better Pokemon. And last but not least, my number one secret is that you can actually set your in-game photos as custom profile photos for when you take part in things like terror raids and online battles. And personally, I love this little touch of customization to make each player stand out. But overall, it's a nice change and honestly almost kind of an evolution of the trainer card thing in Sword and Shield. As yes, they were cool, but in my opinion, they could have done something so much better and I'm so glad to see it getting some improvements and getting some evolution of its original concept in these new games. But with that being said, trainers, I hope you have enjoyed today's video 
video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. It would mean so, so much to me. And I shall see you guys next time. Goodbye.